David? Matt Ellis. Oh, third time's a charm. What's happening? Dude, I'm just sitting here IG and live, and there's nothing but, there's nobody but me and Tide Nut. I can, I, I'm still not getting the notifications for that. It's not showing up at the top thing? Nope. I've, I refreshed it a half a dozen times a while ago. Maybe you got a setting off. I I guess so. Let's, let's take a look. And look now at, you're on there. When did you get on there? Uh, seven, eight minutes ago. Oh, well, yeah. it's just now showing up. <laughs> Matt, I got a trivia question for you. All right. What does the Bassmaster 2017 Bassmaster Classic and the 2017 World Series have in common? <clears throat> um, the, let's see. I guess they have to do the, with being their, in Houston. Hey, on the Astros Field. Congratulations. Yeah. Has uh, anybody at Bass covered that yet? I think it's kind of ironic. I'm thinking more stadiums are going to call for bass to have their classic in their town. <laughs> it worked for them, didn't it? Let's have it on the Mississippi River in St. Louis in a couple of years. I'm, yeah, I'd say bring it on. Yeah. Bring it the way on. I see the way I see this this World Series, it's a National League versus a National League. Yeah, yeah. This is probably what first time in uh, I think the first that I can time remember in history. Where, former National League team is now representing the American League. See, I figure if I pull for the Na- American League, though, it means I'm pulling for the Yankees, and I can't do that. Pulling for the Yankees? They're in the American League. You might as well, I mean, you mean I'm a National League guy. Plus, my last two years of Little League, our team was the Dodgers, so Uh-oh. I'm basically stuck in that. Yeah. I can roll. All right. Tide Nuts says, I got to go roll cats. <laughs> oh, he did not say that. He did say it. It's there. Now, how do I end this but keep it on the top for a story? You figure that out, and I'll figure out how to get myself, get my notification. I'm going to hit end, end live video, save. There's a save button. This live video will save in the moment. Now that that's over, it can no longer be viewed. What do you mean? Is it saving it on your phone? I think it saves it in my picture slash videos. Now, can I go back and post it, though? Uh, in that, I do not know. Now, let's go up here to your story. Normal. Do I have a select from? What's this button do? Nope. <laughs> last 24 hours. There it is. Famous last words. What's this button do? Save your story. You. All right, Matt. Go see if it's up there. Okay. I think I just did it. Let's check it out here. If it's in the storyline. Oh, actually, I guess I could yeah, switch accounts. There it is. Yeah, there it is. I guess I could switch accounts. Yeah, there it is. It works. Got it figured out. There's nine minutes of nothing. How about that? <laughs> That's about all that is. Well, what's been going on with you? Uh, work and youngins. Kayaking. And did a little kayaking over the weekend. Actually, I went back to back Saturdays. Mm, nice. Went to the same spot on Elkhorn. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, Matt I, I'm out here on the patio, and there's six chairs at the table, and two of them are taken, but one old fella ain't saying nothing. You'll have to watch it in the story. Okay. You know, it was a pro, a, just about a week, a year ago this past weekend, I guess, or week, that uh, I came up there, and we did our 200th show live. Was that October? I couldn't remember if it was yeah. September or October. Yeah, it was October. Okay, cool. So well, what's our number now? Then. How many weeks did we miss in that year? Mm, I, I know, know the last couple. I know the last little bit's been every other. Yeah. What number is this one going to be? Is that a tip? This is, uh, we're getting close to 240, I believe. 
I'd have to okay. take a look. Well, we took some weeks off, didn't we? Because yeah, it should have been. Take Let's see. Time. Library. Let me go over here. Well, what the heck? Shows. This will be, uh, this is 240. This is 240. All right, because last was 239. All right. Episode 240. Uh, well, Dave, I got to fish with a gentleman from up in Louisville last Saturday. Louisville. It's Louisville to the natives, Matt. Louisville. Louisville. Uh, it's, it's literally named after King Louis. But he says his home waters is the is the Ohio River. And I said, I'm sorry. Bless his heart. I apologize to him. I said, and I feel sorry for you. <laughs> now, there's certain pools on that river that ain't bad. You just got to be on the right pools. <clears throat> well, he he says that uh, the fishing up there right now is actually better than it is on Kentucky Lake. And after two days of fishing, I believe him. Oh, man. Matt, that, that's, oh, that's blasphemy. But I have to say, Dave, I believe the Tennessee Federation boys put a licking on them Kentucky boys on, you mean on our whooping? home water. A whooping? A whooping. I think uh, there was about 80, 80 boats in this tournament, and I think the top top five all came from Tennessee, and a local Paris guy won the tournament, blew everybody out of the water. Imagine that. Yeah. But I'm telling you what, Paris Landing and Kentucky Lake right now is tough, Dave. Out of, out of 80 boats, 160 guys, there were only... Seven limits in two days. Oh, my God. Seven limits total. Wow. Four on the boater side, three on the co-angler side. Wow. Uh, now, is a, co, is a co five or three? Five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think one, one, one boat the first day, I think they both had a limit in about 30 minutes that morning. And then uh, after that, things got pretty tough, but. For the most part, most guys were weighing in one, you know, between one to three fish. What was big fish of the derby? I want to say six pounds, five ounces, six pounds, one ounce, something like that. Speaking of big fish of the derby, Matt, you're fixing to go to the OK State and look for a big fish, right? Uh, <clears throat> this is the final tournament of the year for me, Dave, and the biggest. One fish wins it all, $25,000 and a brand new Alumacraft boat at uh, Fort Gibson at the Big Bass World Championship. So, yeah, I've been... What's on, what's on the back of it? Uh, you know, I think uh, the one they had last year only had, like, maybe a 60, 60 You know Yamaha. what? I think I know how to get in that next year. I'm not going to give you my secret, though. Well, you get in on it, buddy. We'll, we'll both go. You qualify for Kentucky, and I'll qualify for Tennessee. Do you know what the Kentucky fish was, by chance? Yeah, I want to say it was about five and a half pounds. Oh! Maybe six I, pounds. Oh! oh. Oh, I know exactly where to go. <laughs> go for it. Now, does, where does it does it have to be out of? Does it matter what kind of water it's out nope, of? You can fish a private pond or public. Done. Now, if I you know catch exactly. it in a private pond, you can't go to that same pond the next year. That's all right. It's just a one time deal. One time deal. Go for it though, because this is a, just a one one time one fish biggest fish wins, and everybody else just goes home with the, uh, you know. Whatever, whatever they have for lunch, for lunch there. All right, I know where to go because I've caught ones way bigger than that qualifier out oh, of there already. You can do it, man. All right, Let's done. Do I, I might, plan. I might go, I might go out there January first and do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I you, caught a, I caught like starts. I, I caught like a four and a half out of there January first this year. Go for it. You're supposed to ask me what I caught it on, man. Uh, what'd you catch it on? That's a Bass Tech tungsten green pumpkin jig with a with a menace grove on the back. Hey, that's a good combination there. Dude, them menace groves are perfect for half ounce jigs and below. They are. I mean, they fit right on there. Them pinchers stand up and they're perfect. They're very versatile. Very versatile. Mm-hmm. But Matt, we also have a TOS challenge game coming up Saturday night. We do bat the battle of the forty five to seven. The bat the forty five and seven bowl. <laughs> I heard Kentucky only had like a, a what twelve offensive plays. There's that had to be more than that. But and, and our touchdown was pure luck. As a matter of fact, did you see our touchdown? No, I didn't. Our quarterback was on like a 25-yard run, and he stretched to get in the end zone, and the ball came loose as he got knocked out of bounds. It bounced one time, 
and her dude standing in the end zone caught it off the bounce as he's standing in the end zone. <laughs> so that's a bounce pass. <laughs> it was like yeah, seven. Very tall on the bounce pass. It was seven to seven at that point. And then it went downhill from there. And then and then we got on the bus. Yeah. We was like, you know what? We're good. I'm tired of hearing them stupid cowbells, the cow which is another is whole, like, no other no other school can have a noise nuisance except Mississippi State. Yeah, I guess they got grandfathered in on that. Oh, stupid cowbell. I'd have to wear me a shirt that it's down there that says, I don't need any more cowbell. I've been to the couple of Mississippi State games, and actually one of them was Kentucky back when uh, Lorenzo was really? there. Yeah. The hefty lefty, huh? Yeah, and, uh, that, man, it was loud and annoying in that stadium. Very loud. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, it's uh, Tennessee got their, their butts whooped going on 14 quarters now without having score, scored an offensive touchdown. Well, let's don't let's keep it fourteen plus. Let's keep it to eighteen. Yeah, we're going for a record. I, I think we probably already set the record. Well, Matt, you know the interesting part. I was going to text you Saturday, but I didn't. I didn't want to. Do you know? Do you know Saturday's game spread between Bama and Tennessee was the largest in the SEC ever, not with Kentucky or Vanderbilt in it. Whoa, Tennessee <laughs> is breaking all kinds of records. This Dude, thirty-seven point five, and how much did you lose by? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Yeah. They kind of know what they kind of know what they're doing out there. They do know what they're doing, don't they? Yeah. It's funny. It's funny how they. Dude, know it that. is it is insane how good those people are. Oh, they put their second string guys in there. Oh, you're talking about Vegas, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're good too. I don't know how they yeah, figure it out. No, that's what that's what I'm talking. That's what I was talking about the whole time. Yeah. 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 Hey, my my boy, my boy Damian Harris from Kentucky ran a couple. <laughs> he ran in the end zone on y'all a little bit. I saw that. Yeah, he's from right down there. He's from one county away from Lexington. And but when Kiffin shows up at your house, what do you do? You go sign with him. Yeah. It's kind of like when Calipari shows up for a point guard or a big man. What do you do? Oh, gee, I think I'll go to Murray. Uh, no, let's go to Lexington. <laughs> that game's here in Lexington, Matt. But the the weather the weather may determine that game. Oh, is it supposed to be pretty nasty? It's supposed to be like 34 and rain. You're kidding. No. It's like, it's supposed to get to 39 tonight, 34 tomorrow night, and Saturday is supposed to be nasty. It might be snowing. Uh, they said it's they said it's possi- not likely, but a possibility. Mix, mix preset, maybe. Yeah. Ooh. So I don't know. I mean, whoever, I mean, here's the deal. We're all hyped for it, but then you're, you, y'all got one of the best running backs in the conference in my opinion he's gonna he's gonna run all over us you watch and see he's gonna have to because we can't do anything else well we're better in the air i think right now so if it's gonna be that weather y'all probably have the advantage with running i told uh cash daniel today it said take it easy on us this weekend we're still we're still pretty sore i saw that i saw that <laughs> i was gonna like it but i couldn't no <laughs> you couldn't like that one huh no maybe i should have liked it from the <clears throat> I don't know, man. This is uh, this is like uh, we're fighting over like fourth place right now, third yeah. place, fourth place, whatever it is. You know, pretty much everybody, Crazy. everybody of all nations already fired the coach. It's just a matter of time, dude. That is insane, man. It is. Uh, I think I think even Butch Jones knows it's coming. What's his buyout though? Uh, everybody I keep hearing is saying nine million for him. Now it may end up being around eleven or twelve for all staff and everything. Yeah, I think it's about nine, nine and a half for Butch. And if I could write a check right now to do it, I'll go ahead and donate it to the university. So this one would you really? Me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for I'm ready for somebody else. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to get on my soapbox. My you know what? Don't let me ask you. Let me ask you this: Who are you going to get? I can't tell you. I don't know. I tell you, who's going to show up down there? It's old boy from Lowell. <clears throat> he is one of the candidate. He is one of the uh, coaches listed. A lot of people think he should be there. He wants in the back in the SEC so bad he can taste it. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully he'll behave when he does get there. 
Well, he lost his, he lost his, uh, what's the worst way to say it? He lost his, uh, buddy in crime. So maybe he will straighten up. His, uh, partner in crime. That's what I meant to say was partner in crime. A lot of people say that he don't want to be there now that he's gone. So we'll see. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm about ready for, man. I'm about ready to go kill a duck. Oh, me too, man. Saw a few on the lake over the weekend. I'm ready. Yeah, man. But you know what I'm ready to do right now? I'm ready to go to Missouri. Missouri. Let's call some JMFW. Let's do it. Let's get him on here. He's 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 wrapping up with Brian Thrift, so let's, he might be done. He might not. Oh, on their, on their show? Thrift, yeah, Thrift and Ari were doing their thing tonight with James. Oh, okay. And that's all where I can know he's going to have a, or a Sunday evening Halloween show. Ah. Of course, I just sent Halloween podcast text picture, Matt. Oh, that'll be a fun one. Hey, is this JMFW? We're wide. Oh, my gosh, we're wide. Dude, are you really wearing a flat, flat bill right now? Yes, I am. Do you want me to send you a picture? No, I'd rather just have a flat bill. Well, you can go to ballsdeeptackle.com and get you one of them good old worldwide hats. When are you going to tell Balls Deep to put that in your bait sack and then you're good? They're going to. Okay. We're working on it right now. I've been suggesting that for a year and you keep ignoring me. I know he ignores a lot of things, even me. No, I mean you. I mean, I'm like, James, that's a that's a marketing magic right there. I'm, I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. Did, and did you, Are did we you live tell, right now? We are, we are live. Did you tell Thrift that you had more important things to do? I did. I was like, you need you need to let me go and get on out the roller scoreboard right now. Dave Rose in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I'm sure that, went over well. is that, that is where we're at, isn't it? That is where it, we're it, at. It is. 13 countries. We are on the outdoor scoreboard, right? We are. That's right. We've got 2 billion Counted people from right. China listening to you right now. Well, listen here, Chinaman. <laughs> hey, easy now. Buy Dr. more Whopper Floppers. Easy now. Dr. Seuss got in trouble for that. Well, they're probably making them over yep. there. The, yeah. Make the Whopper Floppers plop a little bit better. Yeah. Uh oh. What's your favorite size? Whopper plopper. One thirty. One thirty. Yep. All right. Actually, it's like yep. actually it's like it's eight thirty where I'm at. Oh, huh. You're funny. Well, you're in a whole different. You're in a whole different hemisphere. I am. That's a that's a mega, that's a mega plopper right there in eight thirty. Yeah, it is. Wow, that's like yeah, the, it is. that's like the Ben Parker spoon of the Whopper plopper right there. I'm telling you, all great product right there that you just mentioned. It was. But what about the James Watson spoon that I keep hearing about coming out that he had to sign a, a doc post it's about? It's coming. Was, that's what I heard. It's coming. We don't have we don't have it the way it needs to be yet, but we're tweak, working on it. Are you tweaking on it? Yes, we're tweaking on it, just like a tweaker. What uh what, what what's your favorite what's your favorite color in it or flash or, or, or silver blue. or whatever? Blue. A little blue heron or just a little blue flash? The blue blaze. Really? I don't know what we're going to call it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's got a lot of blue in it. Dude, I'm well, just making crap as I go. This is just like I do my fishing. I just make it up as I go. But, man, when it hits, it hits, right? That's right. And when it doesn't hit, it doesn't it, hit. It's, it doesn't hit. You just, you just lift, you, you're you just, you just lift the, the the center lid with your with your tackle and show off the center fold, right? That's right. Just lift it up there and, like, there she is. Yeah. I like your idea, Dave, of, of how James ought to do his boat wrap next year. Dude, we talked about that at Lake Cumberland last year. That that's a that's I a, know. I mean, I mean, that's hey, an they, old brainer. They make ink pens to do that. Why can't they make bass boat wraps to do that? Yeah. Hey, you know what? Just put some Velcro on there, and when you know a top fifteen, a top ten reveals <laughs> a little bit more. A top ten reveals you, a little bit more than a top fifty. You know, you're from Kentucky when you. Have to have Velcro on a conversation, <laughs> or or yeah. duct tape. I mean, we're just talking or about duct tape. tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, me, so me and Matt James were on Kentucky Lake back in July with this little outdoor scoreboard challenge. And yeah. The fish and the ledge fishing had died about a week or two before we got there. We was a little disappointed. 
But I told Matt, I said, you know what? Let's just go do a JMFW inside of Paris Landing. Let's get our spoons out. Oh yeah. And yeah. we're gonna have to have you. We're gonna have to have you show us because well, uh, we pretty well sucked at it. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Well, it wasn't deep enough, boys. Yeah. It ain't deep I, enough in there. No, well, it's not that I, 50, 60 foot deep like you're used to fishing. No, you gotta have deep for that for that spoon to be effective. In a boat dock, it has to be a deep boat dock. What's the minimum? It does. Thing? 40. Oh, oh, really? So it needs to be 40 and deeper? Hmm. Uh-huh. That's crazy. You know, I fished a regional one time. Me and Matt did on Chickamauga five or six years ago, and I drew a guy from the Missouri Division, and he was telling me about that spoon technique. Yeah. He said, he said certain times of year, he said, that's all I do. I don't even go anywhere else. I just start hunting down marinas. That's right. And see now, here unfortunate thing on uh, Table Rock is all marinas are off limits now. You're, oh, for congrats. anybody to fish. Did you cause that? Way to go! No, no, you're welcome, America. <laughs> Let you down again. Yeah. Oh boy, America's I thought we, down. I thought was making. I thought it was making America great again. What happened to that? Like, do, so you was there marina like a, fishing great again? Oh, we, we could. We need to make marina great fishing again. Great, great again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, man. I'm all for that's it, boys. Dang. So, so, like, so was there like a, a a liberal vote and everybody said no more marina fishing or what? That's what took place. Unbeknown to me, uh, the uh, polling and, and uh, or actually the, the ballot boxes were closed to all oh. registered Republicans. Oh, my gosh. Did, yeah, they, did so, they take this vote when you were out of the state. country? They did when I was in South Africa. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Does the does the uh, whopper plopper spin backwards on the southern hemisphere? It actually it moves itself to the front. You tie it on from the back hook. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's upside it down way. backwards. Yes. Yeah. It's Speaking of back. the southern hemisphere, how cool was that going down there representing the, the U.S. of A. and James and getting some silver? Man, that it was it was such a great trip. You know, I went with seven other great anglers, and we had we made the most of it. And uh, you know, I'm not going to say we missed had a missed opportunity. South Africa team beat us, uh, beat us, and uh, uh, we made a run at it and did the best that we could and made the most out of every opportunity we had. Well, I can tell you this, guys, without getting too political right now, man, we got it made as Americans. Oh, I bet. How yeah. rough was it? Well, did you have to stay in Tiki uh, Hut or what? No, no. The place we stayed was nice. Uh, but from the other competitors and talking about, you know, general things about how beautiful the roads and everything used to be to uh, 30 years ago and compared to the day, it's like they don't <laughs> – there was a joke. It's like we don't have elections. We have announcements around here. <laughs> oh. You know. We're going to tell you how it is, huh? That's right. And, uh, and the, the way their houses are built and how their fences around, you know, brick, brick, brick fences, rock fences around everybody's houses inside fenced, uh, subdivisions with electric uh, hot wire on the top of them and, what? and panic, panic. Yeah, dude, we, wow. not, not all places are like that, but the nice places, you know, these people are accustomed to, to live in this way all the time. On, you know, not knowing if they're, uh, you know, going to get robbed or murdered or, or anything else. And I'm not trying not to be negative because there's not. a beautiful country over there. But they, they live a total different lifestyle than we do. And they 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 don't have the same freedoms that we have. Dang. You know, I'm, I'm not I, – I'm, I'm not afraid at times if I leave the door unlocked of my truck outside. I'm not – I'm yeah. not fearful of somebody stealing it or breaking into it. or maybe You don't leave anything laying out in your car there. Uh, I mean, these are all things we were briefed on by, by citizens of that country. Wow. Like, man, you guys, you guys go through a lot of extremes here to uh, the particular house that uh, Lionel Bothell's sister-in-law had uh, where we, we all joined and uh, put our bags in for the day before we caught our plane back home. Uh, the upstairs is all the bedrooms. Downstairs, the living room, kitchen, dining room, all that stuff. 
and upstairs, when you start upstairs, this all concrete house, they have the gates that you see at the at the mall that you the metal gates that you pull together. Yeah. They she's got that, so she hits a button upstairs, she can keep somebody from coming upstairs in her house. And I what? said, "Is this normal?" She said, "Yeah, this is normal." Like a panic room. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then people want to complain about certain things here. You know, I mean, like, the reality is you don't know how good you got it till it's gone. Wow. Some people some people need to get gone for a little bit and see how good they got it. Yeah, no kidding. So, yeah, you know. I, heard, I heard there was a rumor that Scott Martin got a Brazilian wax for that trip. Is that true? <laughs> he did. He did. I was sitting okay. right by him when I got mine. Oh, well, well, see, now you get kind of weird, don't you? Yeah. yeah he those things, kind of weird. Those, I, said, I told him, I said, this is normal, dude. Come on. Do those things hurt as bad as it sounds? No. I'd have to keep that as many as I have. Uh, oh. Okay. A, a, a true veteran, huh? Yes. Yes. Wow. You know you know, it's written in Ot Defoe in my contract, a major league fishing contract, that we're allowed uh, personal time to go get pedicures. Well, you major, know, major league fishing. I, I figured he needed more of a foot massage for the trebles that he's going to step on before too long. Well, we, it's a hazard you take when you you're, you're uh, barefoot or flip flop wearing machine like that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask him. Is he he? Uh, you always see him with the the buff on his face and the gloves on his hands, but he's always standing around in shorts, barefooted. I mean, does he not care about his feet? Well, maybe they're going to come out with a new product. Hey, I, I'd look for new buff foot products at ICAST next year. There you go. They're kind of like the toe, the toe shoes that you see Aaron Martin's wearing. Yeah, them Except Hulk shoes made stocks. out of hemp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> them Hulk shoes made yeah. out of hemp. That's a good one, Matt. <laughs> How about that? Produced in Denver. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Somebody's going to hear our idea, boys. Now we're gonna oh, get, man. We're gonna, we go. Yeah. We're going to get knocked <laughs> off now. TOS has been the, the source of many uh, ICAST grand prize ideas. I'm telling. Oh, you. we've got oh we've got several lawsuits oh. working right now. We just can't talk about them. Yeah, great, good for you guys. Hey, you let know. me ask you one thing, James. On your spoon technique, do you ever put like offsetting hooks on the side, one high, one in the middle, or do you just go with the bottom hook? No, I I, I put a stinger hook up on the front eye. Okay, okay. And that's what we're doing with the worldwide spoon. We're we're attaching. The uh, Gamagatsu makes a, uh, I think it's called a G, G stinger or G string. No, well, we can we try to see this PG thirteen at least. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about this. I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. We'll call it the G stinger, not the G stringer. Is the, is the bottom uh, going to be a Gamagatsu? Uh, on on the worldwide spoon, it's yep. going to be a, a hook. It's going to be a hook that uh, River to Sea makes for themselves. Okay. It's going to be a heavy-duty hook, and then we're going to attach a stinger hook right out of the package. It's going to have the stinger hook that you need and that you will want to have to truly become worldwide. Well, those oh, hooks that they funny. put on the, the whopper ploppers are pretty good. I don't know if they make them yeah, themselves. Yeah, and that, that's what's going to – that's the same hook that's going to go on the worldwide spoon. Interesting. We just don't know. I don't know whether to tell you it's going to be a – uh, uh, number one or number two? I'm not sure yet. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. is it going to come in one size or several sizes? It's going to come in one size, fellas. One there size ain't but one worldwide size. spoon, right? The worldwide spoon is going to come in one size if if that works out, and we see a need for uh, uh, downsizing or upsizing. We'll we'll wait a little while and we'll introduce another size. So. This particular spoon's going to weigh about an ounce. So really, yeah. Oh wow. What's what's the length yeah. on it? Five or six? It's going to be a little shorter. It's going to be more about four. We're going with a little little width at the bottom of it. <clears throat> the, the the deal with this spoon is the rear trajectory when it hits the water. Really? So yeah. Whether you're casting it out on a deep ledge or flipping it around or pitching it around, when it hits the water, it's going to shoot rearward and go crazy and uh all right that that's what that's what we're working on and it's not going to be your you know it's not going to be no seven dollar spoon either it's going to be a little little more than that 
Well, for an ounce, for an ounce of metal with two hooks, I'd hope it would be. Yeah. Yep. So. Wow. What uh, our, what size what size line do you fish that on? Twenty pound fluorocarbon, maximum right. fluorocarbon. All right. And sometimes people use twenty five pound, but I I use twenty overall. You want that water to be clear. So. And the sun on it, right? That's right. No cloudy, no cloudy spooning. Yeah, you you can. And I'll go to a gold spoon then, but they're they're not as strategically uh, located. You know what I mean? It's more like they're more roamers. And but if you want to go for the glory hole of all glory holes, yeah, you want that sun to be shining, so you know See, where Matt- to stick it. See, Matt, that's the only tip. That's the only tip I knew about. I told you the sun had to be on the dock, and the rest of it, I just screwed up. It's called just the tip. <clears throat> that is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm full of good information tonight. You are. Yes. Good they information. Haven't stumped, stumped you yet? Yeah. Yeah. James, I can hear. Maybe this. So, will, maybe this will uh, stump you. We've got a. Uh, a loyal listener, Mr. Cody Fur, up there in Ohio, uh, he wrote us a question on Twitter. He wanted to ask you. I don't know if this is an inside hey. joke or not, but so I'm just going to ask and you answer to the best of your ability. He wants to know what can we do to stop orphan violence in the world. Well, Love it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, yeah. Listen, listen more to the outdoor scoreboard to learn more about that, and to Luke Duncan's li- uh, low budget live, and you'll learn how to <laughs> handle that situation. I guess, I guess so. Uh, that, that, yeah, you that handled that well. Now, if you ever run, you know, try out for Mister America, that'll be your question that the judge is asking. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I will be prepared now. Yeah, you're ready now. Is that before the 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 is that before the gown? The time I got to wear a gown? Yeah, yeah, before the evening wear part. Okay, good. Yeah, good. I don't know if I want to see that. Well, we, I, we thought that would be in cahoots with the uh, with the with the G hook. No, it could be. <laughs> yeah, depends on how late how late how many cocktails I've had. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, it's inter- a- if, it, if you sent Bill Taylor a, one of your flashlights for, for answering the phone the other night. No, I haven't. But I sent him one earlier in the year, so it's up to him to put new batteries in it. That's exactly right. Them batteries ain't cheating. They're up to you. That's right. you got to go get you some give them good rail back batteries. Yes. So. Well, just make how many times I've been on the show. Is there any record of how many? You know, I was thinking. Being on? Well, I think the record is tied between David Mullins and Cliff Crochet, but I think you're on the trail. What's up there? Oh, I, I did get my teeth to, Dave, to bump Dave Mullins out. Well, you need I to see. book me immediately so I, I can think, get ahead of Dave Mullins. I think. Well, I mean, we can do a once a month Watson check in if you want us to. Well, there you go. Would you do it next time you have Dave Mullins on so we can get on there together? Dave Mullins makes the best uh, uh, videos that there is known to bass fishing. If, they're, if, they, if, if, if they involve Andy Griffith, I agree. Yeah, when he's not busy. Well, Aunt uh, oh, my gosh. You should you should see his latest uh, Jacob Wheeler one. It is hilarious. No. Where's it at? <laughs> I don't know. I guess you have to call Dave Mullins and ask him for it. He won't see. Here's the problem: me and Mullins are fine during the year until basketball season. He's a Duke fan. I'm a Kentucky fan. He won't return my text during basketball season. Oh, the hate comes out. It does. And then Kentucky and Tennessee are playing in football Saturday. So he's really not going to return my text. Poor little feller. I do feel sorry. Times he was cheating on Andy Griffith with uh, Burt Reynolds yesterday. I think he was watching Smoking the Bandit. I, I saw that. He, he had, he had that, that is scene, a great movie. Had that scene where uh, where uh, Buford T. Justice comes in and orders that Diablo sandwich and a Dr. Pepper. And makes yeah, it fast. He's that. in a hurry. And then Hush Puppies, Daddy. 
<laughs> we ain't got time for that. <laughs> oh boy, that, that is funny. funny. Well, I mean, Poor see, I think I think, Cro- no sense. I think crochet and Mullins are tied for about six each. How can you have? How can you even have a conversation with a crochet? I mean, well, we, ha- that's, we have that's, an interpreter. That's a difficult. Oh, okay, we have, good. We have good. an interpreter. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. You just ask him. You good. just say, "Hey, how you doing?" And then put the mic down. And, uh, yeah, he, and then walk away, and then well, come back after fifteen yep. minutes, and he's still rambling on. Yeah, I mean he he's never short of a story that, or two. Now we did we did have uh, we did have Aaron Martin's on one time, and that did it happen. <laughs> yeah, funny. I think I went and ate supper and came back. I, I had a I had a couple hors d'oeuvres. I was out of town in Fort Worth, I think, for that one, and uh, I ordered room service, and they came. I ate it, and I checked back, and he was still talking. <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. Oh, oh boy. So do you have any MLFs remaining this year or are they all next year? They're all next year. We're going to start airing what we recorded. So we went to uh, Arkansas and we went to uh, uh, Lake Murray, South Carolina, for the select anglers. And they just got done somewhere down in Mississippi filming the last – uh, cup angler event. Has there ever been a better coach for MLF than Shelly Sanders? Uh, no. Okay, that's what I thought. No, no. Good question. What What about Marty Stone? Marty Stone does does he ever smile? Uh, yes, he does. Believe it or not. Okay, okay, just checking. Yep. Yep, I like Marty. He's fun. Marty's a cool so, dude. I remember. I remember what was uh, we was doing like a, a Tuesday night or years ago on Kentucky Lake. We put in at Big Bear Boat Ramp and Marty Stone's truck. That's back when he fished BASS. His truck and trailer were at the ramp. Did you sabotage it? I did not. I did not. I, I didn't. You know, I, I wanted to. I wanted to make sure a North Carolina boy felt welcome in our state. Yeah. Did you know a homeless person once sabotaged and took a dump in the back of Brent Ayler's truck? In his camper, <laughs> did I, did Adler put one of them uh, Adler GoPro stickers on his clothes when he was done? He should have, but that's, you, that's a little bass bass fishing facts right there. Could we use that on? It left trip? him a note. What did it say? It just said, "Dear, dear uh, Adler," because his name was on his truck. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you for leaving your back camper unlocked. Uh, uh, you know. I took a big dump, oh. something like that. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what state that happened in? Yes, that happened in. Uh, that happened at Pickwick. Oh, okay. that would be Alabama. Did Did Swindle give him any dude wipes? I I, I don't know if Swindle coaxed. If, if I'm sure Swindle did, if he was the one that that asked the homeless person if they would like to take a dump in the back of Ayler's camper. But this is, I know Swindle wasn't there because this was a tour event. No, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. You can ask Brent Ayler sometime about it. We, yeah. We will. We definitely going to do that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, Make uh, a note of that. About a year ago, it's about this time of year, <clears throat> time of year last year, I think we had you on and I was fixing to head out to Fort Gibson and I think your advice to me was don't go there. Uh, I'm going again yeah, this yep. weekend. How'd that work the same out tournament. for you? Well, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, man, how'd that work yeah. out? <laughs> I, I should have taken your advice. Like <laughs> yeah. You're right. Guess what? Think, wasn't there like a hole in yeah. the boat or something, Matt, and you had yeah. to run to the shore? Yeah, or, uh, it, it was actually Kevin Vaughn, you know, one of the uh, MLF cameramen. Yeah. Uh, or boat guys, yeah. not cameramen, but boat guys. He was my uh, marshal for that tournament, and we were using his boat. And halfway through the day, it got pretty rough out there, and we were in our way – on our way up to 14 mile creek there and we hit a bad wave in the middle of the lake doing about 55 and water flooded into the boat he had a patch a fiberglass patch crack open on this hull and we almost sank the boat right there he just gunned it best he could and, and beached the boat you were in vaughn's boat in vaughn's boat yep yep well good for you guys <laughs> so yeah fort gibson did not treat treat us well last year I would rather be kicked in the nads with golf shoes. Spikes or no spikes? Yep. Seriously. 
you know, there I, you go. I, I kind of get the like. feeling there too, but I got to go for it one more time. You know, the greatest thing about Fort Gibson is I have a free place to stay at Sharon Biffle's house. You make you kick Tommy outside? Who? <laughs> well, I figured that was maybe Tommy's wife. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of her. Hey, James, I got a question for you, ML, MLF style. Uh huh. Since they can't, since y'all are are zipper lipped about money and winnings and all of that, let me ask you a question: uh-huh. Is if I'll, yes or no will be sufficient? Okay. Can, can a top MLF professional make a living fishing MLF? Only, only fishing MLF. Can he make a living? Uh, no, because you have to fish one of the major tours or have retired and quit fishing one of the major tours to even be involved in major league fishing. Okay, does that answer so that, your question? Well, it does. That means Denny Brower, obviously. Can Denny Brower make a living just fishing? An MLF. Yeah, because sponsors sponsors know who he is. No, I, I'm saying I'm a, saying off of MLF winnings that nobody knows about. Oh, that I can't answer that question. Oh man, I thought I had the backdoor question, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> you nope. can't backdoor but a, I can a guy you from this. Uranus. Oh my That's gosh! Right. Now that was you weird. have to wait. You have to wake up earlier to get me on that. Man. I no. just knew that was going to be our – I no. mean, come on. Come on, Duckett and Klein. Put them no. checked on TV. Yeah. Don't you call and ask Duckett and Klein that question. See I tried to say. ask Klein, and he totally blew me off. He, he just he didn't say he signed a $1 million confidentiality agreement? <laughs> well, let me, let, me ask, let me ask you this. I tried to ask him this other question, and he didn't really – I don't know if he understood the question correctly or not. In football, James, if I kick a field goal and the and the buzzer goes off while the ball's in air, the field goal counts if it's good, right? Yes. Okay. In basketball, if I shoot a half court shot, the, the buzzer sounds halfway through the shot, the bucket goes in, it's good, right? That's correct. How come in MLF if I hook a fish and I have to horse it in as fast as I can, how is that not harming the fish more than it hitting a carpet, but it should count if the buzzer goes off? What do I look like? Somebody works for PETA? How do I know the answer to that? Well, I'm not really a big fan of PETA. I'm just asking. If you hook a fish and there's five seconds, you can't get it in in time, is it not better to let that fish get in the way you normally fish, or is it better to rip its lift off and get it in the boat within five seconds? Well, let me ask you a question to your question first. Have you ever ripped the lips off of any fish in your life? Just rip uh, them off, like come back and just... How about a partial ripoff? Like you just got some skin? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm mean like half of the lip was hanging, but not the whole lip came off. Why'd you do that for? Well, I didn't mean to. I thought maybe it was a, like a cropping and ended up being like a bluegill and like half of the lip was hanging. Well, that's a bluegill. They don't count. Bass have different lips. They do, but I'm just saying, I think if you have a fish hooked and the time goes out, you should be allowed to reel that fish in in a in a regular manner. I mean, ain't no different in hurting it that way than it is letting it land on the Are carpet. Are you always this nitpicky? No. I, well, <laughs> some people say I have an odd outlook. I do have an odd outlook on life. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know what to say to your stupid question. Well, fine. That, just, you know what? You or just, your stupid statement, whichever one. is either a stupid question or a stupid The answer stupid is statement. it adds more excitement. and It would add more excitement. Yeah. That's a good response yeah. to it. I, yeah. think, I, think she, I think Shelly might do undo another button if that was a new rule. <laughs> now, you're, now you're talking good ideas. <laughs> Bring Kinda that like up at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like your new wrap on your truck next year. Oh, by the way, you are coming right. back. Are coming back to Cumberland. You going to be at the same cabin area? Yes, we are. All right, I'll come or see you. Got all you. Yeah, got it reserved. Why don't you bring us dinner next time? Well, I'm a, how about we just go to dinner? Even better. Well, no, they don't have a Chick Fil A down there yet. Never mind. <laughs> nope. We got that restaurant right across the road. There's pretty good eating. Like Two thirds of the uh, the rows. Uh, offspring 
works at Chick Fil A, so he's got to keep yeah, him, I could keep him busy. I could keep I could keep my I could get my my dad discount at Chick Fil A. Yeah, there you go. I got uh, hey, I got two ten dollar Chick Fil A uh, gift cards. Chick-fil-A. Are they worldwide? They ought to they ought to get yeah, into I can use the, them anywhere I want. They ought to get into the fishing uh, sponsorship. I mean, that would be a good fit. Yeah, but they don't want us fishing on Sundays. Uh, that's true. Oh, good you know. point, James. Good point. You'd have to change your you'd have to change your jersey on Sunday. You could have Chick Fil A Thursday through Thursday through Saturday. Oh, there you go. Dual title sponsorship. I like that. Do you think that'll ever happen? By the way, two two title sponsors? No, like a sponsor. Like let's say the dude ain't got much for a whole season, but he could sponsor you for a tournament. Would that ever happen? I remember, I remember Mike McClellan did it one year. He had two boat wraps. Did he really? What on each side? Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, he had two boats. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah, when back when he, he did. did uh, that. Yeah. And Ish Ish had uh, Ish had two two boats one time he did. too. A couple yeah, of years fished, ago. Yeah, when he fished both tours, he had a boat for yeah. too. Must be sure. nice. He owned a Ferrari too, though, right? No, oh, he sold that. He did. I believe so. Did his girlfriend make him? No, no. His venture into the big boat, a big offshore fishing. Oh. I think he. I think he wanted to. I think he wanted to to uh, uh, have that toy versus the other toy, even though Ish could afford both. That saltwater fishing is not cheap. No. But you do get to get a salt life sticker and stick it on the back of your truck, even if you're in a landlocked state like Kentucky or Missouri. You know, for the longest time, I looked at that sticker, and I'm like, what in the world is people doing putting this sticker? I don't understand it. I thought it was S-U-L-T. That's like, what I oh, thought. And it was an every a. time I look at it, that's what I read it as. I thought it was S-L-U-T, not salt. I mean that would probably that's make anyway, sense, or, anyway. you know, in a landlocked state. But... Oh yeah. gosh! I was like, hey, easy fellas. I was like, these hookers. <laughs> so that's what fishermen are. We're hookers. We hook bass. Yeah. yeah. So that that's original. Who'd you who'd you get that from? Like uh, Guido Hibben? Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Do you know <laughs> there's a new logo coming for FLW? No, I do not. What, what's Tell me what it is. It's the FLW Tour logo that must be displayed on your boat. Oh, we just talked about that like last show. How about that? On the last yeah. half third of the boat, above the water. Yeah. So what are you going to tell your other are, companies? All pros are required to display a four-inch FLW logo on the upper chest every day of competition from takeoff to a.m. Pros wow. must also display a minimum 12-inch wide FLW Tour logo on both sides of their boat, above the water line, on the rear third of the boat, or on the driver's windshield during everyday competition. Looks like it's going to be the windshield for me, boys. Let me ask you this. We had a uh, the same listener that asked you the question a while ago. He had a real good theory about that. So you're the telling F- me that you got one listener. Well, you listened to me. Well, they were saying it was a coincidence that the same guy asked the dude different questions. We have more oh, downloaders uh, than listeners. We do have more downloaders. They, they will not That's email right. us or tweet us or nothing. But anyway, does that – you think that rule is an effect for all the FLW guys that fishes the opens and they show up at the opens with that big FLW decal? Oh. Well, See, this take a take up? I think he won't be able to – well, what happens if BASS makes your own says cover that up? Then you got to have two windshields. Ooh, so you can have a windshield or both? The back third, you can have either or? I don't know. Good question. Ooh, the windshield The windshield solves it. When you Here's buy what you, buy. you have to do. You need to get Bill Taylor and Trip on same the same, same show and ask him these important <clears> questions. I like it. I like That'd the be dual. a great interview. So if you have a dual console boat, can you have one on each windshield? <laughs> yeah, but who who has a dual console boat anymore? I'm just saying yeah. if they wanted to have Jimmy boat Houston flipping. does. Jimmy Houston. Jimmy Houston does. Is there anything more annoying than boat flipping a fish in you have a dual console? No. There's nothing more distracting and annoying yeah. I've got than a, a dual console boat. I've, I've, I've got a, a dual console story that I, I told Dave. 
and this angler will remain un- at, at anonymous. Anonymous. I was going to say unanimous. <laughs> unanimous. <clears throat> he will remain, he'll remain unanimous, 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 as Donnie Baker would say. But uh, this was told to me by a uh, Fort Gibson angler who I was fishing with a couple months ago. Said this uh, got a call from from oh, uh, I know this story from an anonymous caller asking if he would be interested in taking this. BASS Pro out for a little look on the lake. He said, yep. And they said, all right, be at the ramp like at 9 o'clock Monday morning with your boat. Be ready to take them. And he showed up, and the angler pulled up in a rental car with nothing but a computer chip or a Lawrence chip. And they rode around the lake for a few hours, and when another competitor was passing them on the lake, this uh, unanimous angler hid (laughs) under hid under the passenger console. So he would not be seen. That is hilarious. Awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> no, Matt, you didn't. You did. You did narrow it down to 109 people, though. Yeah. 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 Perfect. So. Perfect. That's all you By any means, hook or crook. Hook or crook. So. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. I guess you just don't. Want to FLW will uh, have these logos and decal form and registration begin at Lake Okeechobee. It will be sold to you. Per the FLW cost. Well, thank you, you very me? much. How much? How much do they cost? If do you know the cost? I yet? have no earthly idea, but I would like to start a GoFundMe campaign to buy my first one. Are you kidding? Well, I think you Hey, send. I tell you what. If I'll send you some GoFundMe money if you'll send me some fudge. Okay, I'll send you some fudge. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure it ain't from Uranus. It is from Uranus. Everybody oh. knows the best uh, the best fudge comes from Uranus. Well, anytime, oh my it, gosh! Whenever somebody asks me what the what the MF stands for in, in JMFW, I tell them it's James Missouri Fudge Man Watson. That's that's yes, that exactly. can be see, so. Yep. See there, you ought, or, see there, put that on the wrap, Matt or James, and then when somebody else comes yep. up with a new one, you velcro it <laughs> off and you come up with the matter of fact. Yeah. Matter of fact, how about mathematical? Fanatic. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Mystery and fantasy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. More fun. More, more fun. I like the more fun. I like the more fun. Let's run with that one. Yeah. Yeah. That is more fun. Does lawyer have more fun? Can he have fun as a lawyer? Yeah. Okay. Manly fantasy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You come up with all sorts, sorts. Oh yeah. Of some and people, you, some people come up with a really nasty one that I do not approve of. That is not endorsed, right? That is not endorsed. That's hilarious. And I was, yeah. When one person took it upon herself to try to get me uh, unsponsored by many people, she thought it stood for something really, really naughty and bad. And I'm like, oh. you are offensive. Wow. Was did, was did yeah. she wear her feelings on her sleeve? Yes. Wow. And she okay. wanted to she wanted to go and tell sponsors to unsponsor me. See it could stand for Missouri Fun and yeah. then you have a whole new plethora of sponsors right there for Mo every fun. lake over there. Yeah. Mo fun. Yeah, Mo That's Mo right. Fun. Mo yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're all about ideas on this show. We are an idea machine. No, nope, free you guys of charge. Idea machines. Free of charge. Good, good thing. <laughs> good thing I'm not paying for this. Yeah. So what are they going to charge for a sticker? Are you kidding me that they were, they're actually going to charge? Well, that for this one, it is a it is a foot wide. So there's a lot of there's a couple printing costs in that. Oh yeah, hey. Phil W is not going to leave any money on the table. Is there um, is there any is there any rule that an that a co angler has to wear a four inch patch? I didn't read all that. Okay, no, no. Didn't, go, didn't go that far. What's the most rods know, but... a co-angler has ever brought with you, with them? Uh, you know, none that actually stand out in my mind now that you say that. But the rule is seven, I think. Oh, okay. oh the limit, the limit they is seven? They put a cap on it. I, I think so. They put a cap on it a couple of years ago. Yeah. They should have. Yeah. yeah. I think Andy Morgan yeah. said, you put a cap on them rods or I'm going to put a cap in there, you know what. <laughs> actually... You know, there's some other pros that uh, I don't think Andy was one of them. That just uh, there's some pros that complain about some some things that need complained about, and some complain about things that I really just don't give a crap about. Yeah. Yeah. 
Does it make you mad when a co-angler doesn't put, give you any gas money? Nope. Okay. No, it doesn't. Okay. But most of the time when a co-angler, depending on the co-angler's age, I'll tell them to uh, keep that money and put it in their own fishing account. There you go. Yep. You still want to go eat, baby? See, now the MF stands for making funds. Making funds. Multiplying More funds. Fun. Multiplying funds. Yes. yes. <clears throat> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, all right, James, we don't want to keep you from, from eating with your lovely lady there. Well, I thought we were going to go out to eat. Now she's changing the rules on me. You mean a woman has changed her mind in the last 20 minutes? Yep. That's amazing. That is amazing. I've never heard of that in my life. Yep. So... Well, guys, thanks for having me on here. Hey, we appreciate it. We're going. We're going to get you up delight. to the. We're going to get you up to the top of the list before too long. Please do. Okay. Tell Mullins I want to own this record. Something okay. fierce. All right. All right. We'll do it. Well, don't tell Chris fine. Cliff. He won't understand. He will not understand because he doesn't understand this. Period. Now Mullins was, no. you know, he, Mullins was on TV last weekend. What? Which one? With little with little Joe Thomas. On the, the Joe's show? Yeah, Real in the Outdoors. I don't, I don't, I don't, I've not been on that one. I don't know about that one. Uh-oh. You mean give me hook a brother up? I mean, he just lives up the road in Cincinnati from me. I'll go up there if you want me to. I want to I be on Joe Thomas's Ultimate Match Fishing is what I want to be on. <clears throat> that does look fun. I'm going to set his ratings on fire is what I would do. Also known, as, also known as uh, Who Can Beat Jacob Wheeler show. Yeah. Well, Blaylock won, won the last Blaylock won the last season. Yeah, he did. JMFW, James Match Fishing Watson. There, I, <laughs> there we go. Done. Match, fish, match Fishing Worldwide. Match Fishing Worldwide. Done. You need, to, you, need to, you need to get a hold of Joe Thomas. Ask Mullen for his number and then text him. Call the notary. I got Joe's number. I just need you guys to put a good word in because I'm really good at interview. And I'm good two, I'll interview. put two good words in. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Matter there's... of fact, match fishing. <laughs> Mo Missouri fun. Mo fun. Missouri fudge. Mo fun. <laughs> yep. Mathematical fanatic. Oh, man, that's funny right there. Just get you a, like a yep. deck of cards and, and shuffle them up with different ones and hand them out. And it'll be like an urban legend what it really means. Oh yes, I am an urban myth. Trading cards, legend, like all mind. rolled up in one. Yep. A legend in your own mind, right? Yep. All right, That's James, awesome. we appreciate yep. you giving us some time, man. Well, thanks. It's good to catch up. Thanks, guys. Hey, no problem. I we appreciate, appreciate your time. I'll let you know how Fort Gibson again. goes. Oh yeah, torture. Go I'll ahead, wear a cup. torture. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. All right, appreciate Bye. it. Thanks. All thanks. Right. See you guys. See, See you, man. All right. Matt, well, there ain't but one thing that that MF stands for, and that's more fun with more Watson. More fun, always. Dude, that guy, I mean, it doesn't stop from the time he picks up the phone. Call me now. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> did he hang up or not? I don't know if he hung I up. I think he did. I think he did, and then you must have hit the redial button. I'm trying to. I think. I think we're good now. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. Blame it on Skype. Hey, you know what? They can't hear us anyway. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Dave, I thought you were going to get that answer out of him. I mean, he kind of did answer it. I mean, mm, he uh, he well, he well, you know, he oh man, it was close. Wasn't well, it? I mean, they it sounds like they've structured it to where uh, no, you do have to remain active within one of those two organizations or have uh, done that as a career. You're and live unless you're retired. Right. And okay. If you're so, retired. So I mean, is you're making so is a living. Denny? Is Denny the only retired one? It's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Everybody else is still active, right? Uh, Kevin Short is he still involved? Oh, there you go. There's your. There's your. He's not really retired. Well, he's really... well, he sells boats, but he's not fishing a tour. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, 
who else has been involved with it. Good job on short. I'd have never thought of that one. Speaking of that, I saw Matt Pangrack uh, in his uh, Bass Cat out there at Hartwell. Hey, top 10 for Panger. Good job, man. Yeah, good job. Nature boy, good. nature boy, grasshopper, whatever you want to call him. I call him successful. Yeah. Uh, he's been doing pretty well the last so few what years. Would, so what would Mark Jeffries do if Panger won it and he couldn't cover the classic for him? Would Mark have to go do it, or would he send, he, would he send Dave? He'd send the other Dave. You know, it is funny that uh, that BTL has a Matt and Dave. Yeah, there's a yeah the other Matt and Dave. The other Matt and Dave, yeah. That's funny. Well, Matt, I think I hope your balls lose Saturday. Uh, what, are they playing soccer or something or basketball? No, your balls. I hope they lose oh, Saturday. Both balls. And I think I think most of the Tennessee Orange tribe will agree with me that they want them to lose so that guarantees that uh old butch is gone he gone i think i think that decision has been made but do you think kentucky a loss do you think a loss to kentucky would uh accelerate here's my opinion no here's why here's my theory is the ad and the powers that be mr jimmy haslam the uh, the the owner of Pilot Gas Stations to the owner of the Cleveland Browns who makes who really calls the shots. I think they're all waiting until they know for sure whether Tennessee is going to be bowl eligible or not. And once that happens, what? I think that's enough to say it's time we start seeing other people. Butch, what? Uh... I lost my train of We've thought. We've got Kentucky. <laughs> And then Southern Miss. Can then, y'all even make a bowl at this point, though? Oh, you yeah. You have to win out. Man, there's, you have to win there's, out. A, there's, there's a bowl for everything these times. So days. do you have, let me, let me ask you this way, do you have three wins left in your season? Uh, is Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt beat you last year. No, I cannot say that anybody, I can't say we're favored to beat anybody, including Southern Miss, who will be do the. You, you, you do realize that we played Southern Miss at Southern Miss opening game of the year, and it was kind of close. Yes, I do. Southern Miss is pretty good, well, actually. You, if you haven't scored an offensive touchdown in 14 quarters, David. Wasn't it September? Wasn't September the last time y'all scored an offensive touchdown? Yeah, I was at the game where they scored that one. Oh, y'all played a – would you play like Montana? It was UMass. UMass, same difference. I had, an, I had, like, the, um, I had the part right. Who was that, like that, uh, one of the worst that teams game, in the country. But didn't that game halfway close? Yeah, yeah, seventeen fourteen. So Butch has basically lost the locker room. Uh, there's a lot of people who say that yes, he has uh, the the offensive players at least have checked out. Uh, wow. The defense is the only thing that keeps Tennessee in some of these games, but they can only be out there so much. The offense is in and out within a minute and a half, and the defense Dude. gets back out there and gets gassed. And that running back is a stud. He is. It's. Just, I'm. I, I am just. I feel sorry that he has to be. In this on this team in this system. Now, didn't y'all have like a number one recruit last year come in this year? Yeah, we had uh, number... Trey Smith, an offensive lineman. Oh, I kept a, thinking he's a beast. Okay. And he like six five, three forty five. Yeah, and he's I mean he's a grown man right now. He's treating guys like uh, he's a G, he's a GAM. He yes he is, he, and he's he's playing like he ought to be on Alabama's team. Wow, I mean he's a. He is a hard nosed offensive lineman. That's what I thought. Well, my boy Cash is going to come through some way Saturday. You know, a little TOS mojo is going to go reverse on you, Matt, finally. Yeah. Well, if anybody will do it, I'll be glad he'll do it. I will, I will cash in all mojo I ever had just for that game if it's, Cash could do something. It's, uh, it's Tennessee versus Kentucky, it's, it's TOS guest versus TOS guest. It is seven thirty Eastern on the SEC network. I hope by that time, Dave, Lord willing, I will be heading eastbound and down on I forty, pulling my new boat with the Happy Gilmore check in the back of my car. Well, I tell you what, if you do it, well, I can't say that. I'll just, I'll be happy for you. I'll just put it that way. Uh-huh. I'm, you could, you could turn a. Would you say it was a, a what brand? Uh, a Lumacraft. 
You could turn it into a duck hunting boat real easy. I could. Absolutely could. Or I could sell it to somebody. And it's the Big Bass what? Big Bass World Championship. It's ran by the uh, owners of Bass and Magazine. Bass and B-A-S-S-I-N apostrophe. Yep. If you go to uh, BassResource.com, you can find out some information there. If you guys want to get in on it next year and compete against me. I am. I'm going to go catch an eight out of this place it's, I know uh, of. It's only $25 for one state for to buy your membership. You get the ruler, the official ruler, um, and it's $25 for whatever state you want to qualify for, or it's like 65 for the entire United States. So if you want to travel you, to other states. Did you qualify out of Nebraska, too? Last year I did. You're a right, two-state qualifier matt have you have you put that on your fishing resume yet not yet not yet i need to all right that is something that you need to start hashtagging hashtag two two states qualified the big bass what world championship the bb you need to you need to hashtag two state bbwc every post you put on anything that's sort of my calling card yeah, they'll be like, man, I wish I knew what that meant. See, this thing used to be, this used to be uh, a pretty big deal back in the like late nineties. I mean, they had a hundred thousand dollars for first place. It was a big deal, back really. Then. But then I think you know the economy kind of went bad. Uh, sponsorship fell. Does out. that does that twenty five dollars get you a subscription to the magazine? It does. All two okay two issues, I think that you get. Oh, so you have you have a, a biannual yeah, or yes, annual magazine. Much. Okay. Yeah. I've only seen a couple oh, but, arrive. So the, by the time you get done reading one, you wait a couple more months and another one shows up. Yep, exactly. Okay. I got you. Very interesting. Um, what else we got going on? All, pretty much all the fishing stuff's wrapped up, I guess. About done. Uh, there is a co- there is a Costa Championship coming up on Kentucky though on Kentucky Lake. Yep, I saw um, saw Jason Lambert come by us fish practicing last Friday. But Dad and I were out and he drove by us and fished somewhere nearby. And let's see who, who all do we know that's in it? Duke's in it. Todd Hollowell's in it. Uh, we'll got to run down the list on the next show and we'll see who we know who's in it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if Randy Haynes is in it or not. You know what? As a matter of fact, I think he is. I saw an Instagram post of his today. I think he is in it. Congratulations to Randy, by the way, for winning the uh, uh, Pittman Creek tournament. Oh, was that he won it? Yep. I thought you told me that. Uh, I you did sent not me an email, think, I think. No, I sent you a, no, I sent you a text about it. Oh, I, I thought, thought, actually, the person I thought won it wasn't even in it. <laughs> Uh, that was on Douglas, and they had that show in Gatlinburg now. Yeah, yeah. He double qualified for finishing second in the southeast and 13th in the central. Okay. Mark Rose might be in it, too. I'm not sure. I don't know if he is or not. Did he fish the, the sunglass division? Yeah, I believe he did, at least one of them. He might have backed huh. out later on. Okay. I did not know that. Uh, if you want to listen, I noticed that uh, Bassmaster's podcast, Bassmaster Radio, had a recent episode uh, interviewing uh, Trip Weldon about the uh, new rules. Did he open up more? I have to. I haven't got all the way through that episode. Did he open yeah, he up kinda more? Got, he kind of got into it a little bit on. How of course, it we, came had Dave, about. we had uh, we had Dave Frick on, and he like he didn't even like acknowledge the the Luke Clawson deal. Yeah, which everybody knew about. Yeah. I was a little disappointed in that. Yeah, so if you want to find out more about that rule, uh, also the big, the other big changes, they can't have any cull tags that penetrate the membrane. You know the what? Fish. I love that rule. How how are we ten years behind that rule? Uh, it ought to be. It ought to be the rule. It ought to be federal law. I yeah, bet Trump would sign. Through both both tours and any kind of major tour, ought to enforce that. You know what I'm gonna do, Matt? I'm gonna go penalty if they get caught using that. I think I'm gonna go take the tags in my garage and I'm gonna make a Halloween suit out of them. How about that? Because I'm gonna get rid. 
Actually, it's a four ounce penalty if they uh, have a fin clip still attached to the fish when they come to the uh, uh, verification tape board. Or well, what about wasn't it wasn't it Prosnick that caught that fish last year that still had a still had a coal in its mouth? It was in um, or it, it was, was at the, the uh, it was the, at the bracket. The bracket, yeah. And yeah, this year bracket, yeah. Yeah, they weighed it with and without. And it's what did they say it was a three quarters of an ounce difference. Uh, no, there was no difference. Okay, I was thinking it, was it wasn't like three, enough but, to tip it. Well, yeah, because their thing rounds to the nearest one, and it didn't tip. It didn't tip it because it wasn't enough to round up. It was right. like three quarters of an ounce. Right. Yeah. Now it didn't have a ball at the end of it. If it had a little ball at the top of it on the on the string, yeah. it probably would have been just enough. I've got I've got some cold tags in garage, mate, that have like a uh, have like a a hookless uh, crankbait on them instead of a ball. Yeah, I've I've seen some of those. They're pretty neat, but yeah. now that now that I don't need them, I'll just do something with them. I'll take the chain out of them or something. Um, I think that uh, that would be the 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 best stocking stuffer you could give uh, somebody this this winter, or buy it for yourself with a uh, gift card you get for Christmas. Go out and buy you one of these uh, coal coal kits that have the clips. I think I'm going to do that myself for Dad and, and myself. Cal, I think. I think Cal Coast and TH Marine are your two those right now. Yep, yep, and uh, they're going to probably be in uh, a lot more stores, and I think FLW will probably follow suit pretty quick on that too. It's well, just they'll a, be they'll be they'll be a year behind. Just wait. It's just the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. I mean, that gum, them things can't even eat right with a big old hole in their mouth. Like they had a big dip in there and they got cancer in it. And just through. like your Miranda rights, if you don't have an attorney, one will be provided to you. If you don't have a a uh, clip call system flw will sell you one yes i want i, I want to we got to figure out how much them stickers are going to cost that, that's intriguing me right there yeah how about that oh yeah how much we'll make them I'm for gonna, you and give them to you but you're gonna buy them i'm gonna text james right before i jump and say send me look if they have a sticker on them send me the price sticker yeah that would be interesting to know probably about 25 uh, bucks i don't know i don't know a foot a foot wide That's yeah, interesting. It's a good size sticker, and it's got to be probably heavy duty enough to last through you know scratches and, and weather. And it's like and it's like red, so you know red costs more to make than black. Everybody knows that. That's just common knowledge. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I'm just I'm just BSing, man. <laughs> I, yeah. Red car is the most stolen car. If anybody wants to know. <clears throat> oh well, I'm safe then. Yeah, that's just a fact. Red cars get stolen get stole more than anybody. How about that? Yeah. What do you say we wrap her up, Dave? I say shut her down. Shut her down. Thanks for everybody for listening. Uh, Absolutely. It's pretty pretty soon. It might be time for the uh, trivia challenge, challenge, challenge to get kicked up again. Well, I'll tell you what, man. If it's winter time and I get bored, we might go back to every okay. other week or that's every your, week. That's get your that call thing out of that. How many people are you going to like? Man, that thing like took a year and a half to wrap up, it seemed like. I know. Maybe we need to cut her down a little bit. Maybe. Uh, who, let's see who we got. We got a two-time champion, right? No, we have. Yeah, back to back. So that, you know, can we cut it down to? Well, so I guess minimum would have to be eight, right? Yeah, if you're going to have get, a bracket style. Unless you just give somebody a buy for being a two-time champ. I think we could give the two-time champ a buy. He gets a first-round buy. Or could we just have him sitting in the championship? Could be. He could just get a berth to the championship. Automatic, automatic berth for back. Since to back. he's kind of the, the king of it all, he, yeah, we could do that. But don't don't say too much. His ego will not fit inside the uh, the <laughs> jig the jig headquarters. Okay. We'll tone it back a little bit then. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. got to be modest. Got to be modest about it. Um, if you guys are interested. Give us give us a call and tell us why you think you should be. Oh, oh you know what? That would this, be the perfect TOS rant line. Rant is if you think you're so good, you should call 661-665-6867 and give us – maybe we should do interviews over the rant line, man. If they think they're good enough and big enough and bad enough, we should vote them in. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's put that out there through, you know, like how about like, course, right, I don't know, next few weeks, a month, whatever. Of course, we'd have to have more than like 85 listeners because if 10% of 85 called, we'd get eight people. Yeah. <laughs> you know. We'll take what we can. We'll, we'll take at least if, if we can get some candidates to call in. Yeah. We'll see what we can get on that. Yeah, tell us, tell us why you think you should deserve a, a shot at the title. Exactly, or why you should have a chance at even getting there. Exactly. And also, yeah. if you think you would be a good football coach for the University of Tennessee, you can also call oh, and let us know that, how, why you would be a good coach. That just happened. I would gladly pass the word along to John Curry at the Athletic Department of Tennessee. See, I wouldn't. I, w- I wouldn't be Matt just because of one reason. That would make me wear orange, and then I'd eventually get a headache. <laughs> All that know. orange would, would would literally be like, dude, what, what's going on here? Hey, I'll wrap it up with this story. I, I heard Clay Travis last week tell this story. It, oh, I'm sorry. It, it, it's in his book. One, one of his, I think it's one of his most recent books about uh, re, um, back when Kiffin became the coach at the University of Tennessee. He was told this by the AD at the time. It's Mike Hamilton. And, you know, everybody up there at Knoxville thinks they have a, the buddy on the inside. They know all, you know, what's going to happen. And Tennessee's just a circus when it comes to uh, coaching searches. He, he, this really happened. Uh, when About the time that they were looking to get rid of Fulmer, and they were, they were, or maybe they already fired him, they are looking for a coach, the AD, Mike Hamilton, had talked to Lane Kiffin about coming in for an interview. And in the meantime, Kiffin went ahead and FedExed a video package to the AD of uh, some of his recruiting highlight, recruiting ability tapes, and, you know, it was kind of a media package. Well, he put his his own name and return address on the package, so the FedEx guy drops it off at the AD's door and sees Lane Kiffin's name on it. Before you know it, half the town knows that uh, Lane Kiffin's interested in the job or, you know, Tennessee's in talk. But here's the deal. Everybody thought he can't be that stupid. This has got to be a, this is a hoax. It can't be real. So nobody believed it. But it was. But it was true. He was actually dumb enough Kiffin, to put his Lane return address Kiffin, on there. Is he, is he that so, is he that full of himself? Obviously the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a rhetorical question. Yep. Wow. <laughs> That is, man, that's something right there. Talk about having a a, a backwards, upside down, reverse trajectory, career trajectory. You go from coaching an NFL team to now coaching, uh, what Florida Atlantic or whatever. Yeah, they, they, wanted name, they, wanted, they wanted to name they wanted to name the sewer treatment plant after him in Knoxville. That's right. Yeah, that's a bad deal. And they had those big painted painted zones in front of all the stores that say Fire Lane. Oh, that's so, funny. Yeah. That is funny right <laughs> there. Wow. All right, let's shut her down there. It's, uh, All good right, luck, man, David. Uh, I'm, I'll be listening on the radio on my way home, or I'll be trying to watch. I'm, I well, know. I hope you have a boat in tow, and then I won't be so hard on you then. I know. Maybe that'll take the sting off the whole thing, but it's going to be it tough. Be. I think it's going to be a close game. Well, I think the weather might be a factor. It, it sounds like it will. It sounds like it uh, need to. Layer up when you go to that game. Well, yeah, good thing we're not. I'm gonna be inside my my buddy's house at his 40th birthday party. All right. My buddy that found my tumor in me, by the way, and we used his boat, so he's, he's got a TOS connection, man. He does. Yep. I'm, I'm yes. glad he's your buddy. <laughs> yeah, more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, All did right, meet, man. I did meet some guys the other day from Kentucky who were way over, in, on, like practically in West Virginia. And they were trying oh, to tell well, me the name of a lake they fish over there, and I can't remember the name of it. Grayson. Grayson. Greenbelt. Grayson Lake. Yeah, that's yep. way over there. Yeah. 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 So because there's Grayson, Kentucky, there. but it's not. It's Grayson, Kentucky, but it's not in Grayson County, which Grayson County is in the 270, which makes perfect sense in Kentucky. Yeah, not every city, me. not every city county matches up in Kentucky, by the way. So the area codes can be 270 for like Paducah and Eastern Kentucky. No. No, two seven zero is Western. Actually, there's four zip codes in the state. Or not zip codes, area codes. 
Area codes, yeah. There's four. There's two seven zero, and then Louisville area is five zero two, and then this area is eight five nine, and then the 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 dirty six zero six runs way over Eastern Kentucky. It runs all the way under Lexington, and then back up to Somerset. It makes like a J, a backward oh. J. Yeah. You know, yeah, East East Tennessee area codes eight six five, which spells Vol. Does it really? Well, maybe that's just a rumor. I don't know. I think it does. Well, hang on. We yeah. can look, we can look it, it up sure right does. now. Eight six five V O L. Eight is your V six. How about that? Huh. Or there's also other various combinations. Yeah, it could be the other things too, I guess. T O L T O K T O J V O K V O L. Yeah, that's funny. That's that's pretty interesting. I bet that's done on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They got with Ma Bell and said, "This is what we want." Yep, and they said, "Yep, it's available." Yep. There you go. Okay, that's a good way to end it right there. Let's let's uh, shut her down. Let's shut her down. We'll get back with you in a week or two, guys. There you go. Have a good one. See ya.